योग कर्मसु कौशल डॉक्टर कृणाल सोनी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ एच डी जे इंटरनेशनल कॉलेज अफिलेटेड टू वेर नंबर साउथ गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी सूरत वुड लाइक टू थैंक यू जी सी ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट सेंटर अहमदाबाद फॉर गिविंग मी सच ऑपरचुनिटी एंड शेयर माई व्यूज ऑन द टॉपिक कॉल एसेंशियल स्कील्स फॉर एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप डेवलपमेंट इन इंडिया before starting my presentation i would also like to thank dr jagdish joshi sir he is a director and professor of ugc human resource development center gujarat university ahmedabad talking about his works and achievement so he is a very visionary and dynamic person and leader as since long he has been associated with human resource development center gujarat university and due to which he has taken many initiative to put this ugc hrdc gujarat university on the new high level and that is why he has developed and taken initiative for designing many new and innovative courses for the academic fraternity in terms of faculty and students to participate in those courses at ugc human resource development center gujarat university and that is why UGC HRDC Gujarat University is one of the leading human resource development center across the nation and number one in Gujarat state by creating various courses in terms of orientation program, refresher courses, short term training program, PhD courseworks, and RPIT courses, and many more such initiatives from their parts. Okay. it has nice and dynamic website by their own name and it has own registered journal which is also index journal ugc hrdc has signed mou with across the globe in terms of uk and canada universities now let's begin with my presentation okay so essential skills for the entrepreneurs in india right so uh, before going with the presentation i would like to share some few facts and figures as far as entrepreneurship scenario in india is concerned so uh, talking about the scenario from 2016 to 2006 so it has been noted in india approximately 1000 worker per year get converted themselves into the entrepreneurs by having set up their own ventures in terms of categories of small and medium size enterprise that is called msme which is 0.1% per year approximately by comparing this figures of india with the other developed nations across the globe like uh, us and the uk so it is quite less in compared to them and after 2016 these ratios for india has again dropped down so uh, which is not a good uh, you know scenario for the economy so government needs to take such initiatives to rebuild this gap and again boost this msme sector for uh, you know the fast growth of the gdp of the nation okay so let's begin uh, with the presentation part first of all who is an entrepreneur so very simple for all of us that person who set up the business or business uh, you know taking on financial risk in the hope of the profit obviously you want to start a business you should provide some finance to your business without providing finance you cannot start your business and it can, it can be called that finance is a life blood for any business so if you want to start any business two things is must as far as what i understood that first is your uh, will power or your you know uh, initiative to start your business and to start your business the second portion that is much much required that is finance and that is why it has been called the life blood of the business if you don't have a finance you cannot convert your innovative idea into the practical execution so finance is must as far as entrepreneurs ventures are concerned they need to provide a proper financing to start their business to make this 
idea into the execution right okay and what is entrepreneurship so what is the difference between entrepreneur and entrepreneurship so that we can understood over here so entrepreneur is very clear that a person who start up their business or businesses taking on financial risk on their hope of profits now entrepreneurship so entrepreneurship is the process of identifying and starting a new business outsourcing and organizing the required resources right so there is a difference between entrepreneur and entrepreneurship so entrepreneurship means you need to start up your business by organizing required resources which is required and which is essential to start your business without which you cannot do your business while taking both the risk and reward associated with the ventures so entrepreneur is a person who is taking risk on his behalf by injecting his own finance into the organization to put into the existence into the market and to have the capability to build or capacity to run their businesses and entrepreneurship is the actual execution part which has been done from the entrepreneurs right that entrepreneurs needs to allocate those resources which is required for the organization so once the funds which is required for the organization that has been already acquired from the entrepreneurs now entrepreneurs needs to start their business in terms of real executions and real execution means i'm talking about the things which is necessary to put your business into the working condition that is what it is called organizing the various things and resources which is required for your organization you need to acquire from the different different sources and zoners which is required and start your business and after doing this starting of your business you are the person who will actually enjoy the risk and reward that has been taken place into your business that is called entrepreneurship so, so there is a difference between entrepreneur and entrepreneurship so i hope it is clear so entrepreneurship is the process of starting the business and enjoying the fruitful results that you have reserved out of your various activities in the organization okay now what are the essential skills that is required to become a successful entrepreneur in india right so skills that is required from your end to become a successful entrepreneurs in your country right so we will go one by one yes so first we will start with the characteristics that is required to become a successful entrepreneur so first is confidence portion right so you being an entrepreneur should be confident enough what you are doing and what you are going to do right and what you will going to do right so that is what uh, you should be confident enough in yourself right because you are the person who shows the confidence in your business so until and unless if you are not confident you cannot go ahead with the risk taking ability in your organization so you have to be confident enough as far as your business is concerned and that is why you should have some risk taking abilities in yourself right so that is what the first and foremost things being an entrepreneur you should have some risk taking ability without risk taking ability you cannot sustain in the market right and based on this i would like to share some facts and figures for the risk taking parameters for entrepreneurs in india and across the globe so talking about uh, the percentage of uh, risk taking ability and percentage of opportunity taking ability for the globe it is 54.76 those who are starting their business as an entrepreneur across the globe but in terms of in india it is 82.5 so yes this is a positive scenario for the india that people of india are most risk taker if they are finding even a small portion of the opportunity in their business to earn the more profit so risk taking ability in india is on a positive notes so we need to take these things into consideration but at the same time uh the government needs to ensure that people should get uh, the benefit atmosphere to continue this momentum for the future as well right and once you are risk taking and once you have the experience of the market so now you are going to be self confident for the efforts that you are making for your organization and for your business so you have to be self confident enough whatever things you are doing you have to be confident enough because you are not the only person who is doing the business but you are leading your team right so until and unless if you are not confident enough for what you are doing 
how you can download this confident in your subordinates right so you have to be confident enough for what you are doing i'm talking about confident self confident i'm not talking about over confident right so before starting any activity or any work you should have some homework or you should have some analytical power to understand the market right and once you are through with this you have to start your business that is called self confident i'm not talking you should enter into the any business what is going on in the market without having your own homework right it could be dangerous right so that is called we are talking about self confidence and once you perceived your self confidence after having a proper examination and having proper study you should be positive enough for the efforts that you are putting to run your business right so positive attitude is must right you have to motivate your self also and even you have to motivate your team right because successful entrepreneurs are those who can work hands on hands with their teams right so you have to be positive enough for whatever the situation it might be there might be some hurdles in your ways also but you have to accept it and you have to go ahead and that is what your duty being an entrepreneur right you should not download your negativity to your team right you have to be positive enough and that's why you have to pursue it you have to pursue whatever things that has come out in your way you have to pursue it right you should not ignore it or you should not demotivated from it but you have to pursue you have some adaptability power right so that is what the persuasive unit so this is what the confidence if this four parameters is there in any person so they have the confidence power in his own self that is risk taking self confidence positive attitudes and persuasiveness ability right so if you combine this four you being an entrepreneur is a confident enough in yourself right whatever you are doing you are confident enough second portion is competition right i don't feel in any business in the market are completely new i think almost all the sectors have touched all the initiatives and parameters which is required right talking about food industry right we cannot invent some new foods but yes we can have some modification or you know we can have some customized food products to come out something new into the market and that is what the usp of the food industry right Uh, i had seen many people on the facebook also they are running their own channels right they are providing the entire process of uh, making of foods right and showing it to the people and suggesting people to visit those places right so they are not come out with something new food uh, ingredients but yes they are making some modification in the food making process to make it attractive and uh, forcing people to visit visit their uh, you know uh, uh business or uh, you can say their uh, branches or hotels or uh, i had seen even uh, you know local food uh, lari galla people also they are making some usp to the videos and people are visiting right i had seen uh, one of the example of uh, madhya pradesh in indore right sharafa bazar i, I had heard that uh, they have uh, very good foods over there with so many products of foods so why people will go to the sharafa bazar Uh, by leaving so many costly hotels where they have uh, some good ambience to enjoy their foods right so you have to come out with some usp so that people will come out uh, uh, your product right and that's why you have to be competitive enough you have to come out with something new ideas right you have to attract the people right you have to provide some good things to them to come at your place to enjoy your product it could be food or it could be anything right you need to take initiative for this right if you want to become a competitive you have to take some initiative initiative in terms of uh, providing new schemes right uh, to make your marketing very strong enough how to reach to the people maximum people right as i told you the example of uh, sharafa bazar how the sharafa bazar people have reached to the entire nation right so in a today scenario social media is a very good tool right and and i'm talking about social media so people will have the idea about facebook and insta right so put your videos over facebook and insta and boost them for the promotion part so this is called initiative right initiative in terms of 
marketing efforts you know uh, reaching to the people house to house door to door marketing so these are the initiatives you need to take so initiative depends upon the scalability of the business that you want in the future right so you have to take the initiative depending upon the scalability of the business that you want in the future right so your effort will decide at which scale your business will live up in terms of competitive initiatives and that's why you have to be goal driven what would be your vision and mission where you want to see your business after 3 to 5 years down the line right and that will decide your competitive efforts and competitive efforts will be decided by the strategy that you have developed today right so that is what it's called competition third portion is drive your business how to drive your business being an entrepreneur how you can drive your business so being an entrepreneur you have to be very motivated in yourself right you have to motivate you have to motivate your people to work more and more for your organization to have the more earnings and at the same time to become motivate your employees or subordinate you have to pass on this profit to them right so motivation in terms of both in terms of monetary and non monetary right so that is what you need to pass on to your people and that's why to become a successful organization you have to work as a team what is the meaning of team right so what is when i am saying team so what is the meaning of team so team means p stands for what is the meaning of team when i am saying team what is the meaning of team so t e a m so t means what is means team two means together t means together everyone e stands for everyone right everyone from your organization achieve together everyone from your organization achieve more right so you being an entrepreneur you should not have the goal to churn all the profit of the organization that you have earned with the efforts of your employees and yourself so you should not have the habits to churn all the profits from your and only but you need to pass on those profit as well and that is what it is called team building right together everyone achieve more by putting more efforts and at the same time enjoying the bread and butter or you can say the fruits of the efforts with together right so you need to pass on those extra profit to your subordinates or to your employees in terms of bonus or extra perks that you are going to provide if your organization has achieved super normal profits you have to be highly energetic you have to show your high energy power to motivate your employees and high energy will be provided by yourself by attracting them with providing some good schemes for increment or promotions or something so you need to have pass on this particular things as well and you have to be determined you should determine being an entrepreneur you should determine in your mind that what actually you need to achieve right so your goal should not be short term you have to have a long term goal right if i am talking about short term goal so if any particular year if you have a good profit so instead of passing those profit to your employees or team you churn your profit by yourself so what will happen your team will get demoralized they have some uh, you know self belief that whatever we will do we will get whatever we are getting right no extra things we are getting for extra effort so this is a negative impression on your team if you have a short term goal okay so that is what we are talking about uh, short term and long term goals right so uh, you being a visionary leader you should ensure this particular things right uh, then the next portion that we are talking about is flexibility right so uh, being an entrepreneur you should have the flexibility part of in yourself you should have uh, you should be flexible enough 
to adopt the changes or uh, you know whatever the hurdles that has been come out in your way right so flexibility and adaptive nature will go hand to hand as far as entrepreneurship qualities are concerned right so flexible and adaptive nature is must as far as entrepreneurs are concerned i have seen many successful entrepreneurs so those who are very flexible enough as far as their business is concerned so you need to adopt those changes right i had we had seen many examples in the market right by considering the changes that has been taken place you need to adopt those changes and make your business adjustable to the sustainable power for the existing situation so you it is your responsibility being an entrepreneur that you should be flexible enough to adopt those changes and incorporate those changes into your organization to become a successful and change is an opportunity and that is why you need to understand being an entrepreneur that change is an opportunity if you adopt the changes you will incorporate something new into your organization and if you put something new into your organization your organization is sustainable to beat any competition in the market just like we had seen uh, you know so much revolution as far as uh, telecommunication sector is concerned i had seen many companies before 5 to 6 years down the line was there in the market is no more right now like if i take example of uh uninor aircel where is those companies because they have not taken uh, the initiative or we can say they have not done uh, you know the market analysis at the level which is required so they are no more into the market or even if we take some example the reliance jio that has bring the you know revolution into the telecommunication sector we had also seen the mergers that has been taken place into the market and the biggest example for this merger is vodafone and idea again this is an example of adaptive nature right i being an entrepreneur of vodafone would think that no due to reliance jio i should not go and merge with idea so again this is called the blockage of mind right so we need to be flexible enough into the market we need to adapt to changes and come out into the market with more power to beat the competition into the market because you are the person who needs to save your business and who needs to uplift your business so whatever things which is required to save and uplift your business you need to adopt those changes into the market and take the necessary steps for your business to go into the market with more power and more energy and for that you should have the capability to tolerate the ambiguity as and when it is going to arise ambiguity in terms of in terms of uh, you can say the internal stakeholders and external stakeholders when i'm saying internal stakeholders so internal stakeholders are generally employees and external stakeholders are apart from employees all are external stakeholders it could be technological changes it could be government policies also it could be uh, you know suppliers of the raw materials also it could be with the customers also many more right so uh, you need to handle those this things with proper care handle with care right this motto you need to achieve as far as your business is concerned then next part is core values this is most important society uh, most important for the society right because you are doing your business into the society and out of this business you are churning the profit from the society so at the end of the financial year it is your responsibility to download or to pass on few of the benefit that you have churned from this society so now it is your turn to pass back this profit or things to the upliftment and enhancement of the society and that's why we had seen many corporates those who are taking csr responsibility corporate social responsibility right and as per uh, you know companies act 2013 uh it is mandatory by the government for all the corporates who are listed into the market they have to provide 3% of their budget out of their net profit for the corporate social responsibility right by having the same mindset that is a core value right that is a trustworthiness and honest you should be honest to the society right your motto should not like that i will earn everything from the society and i will go back no whatever you have on few percentage you need to pass on to the society so that society will have you know the values the respect for your business 
by having the impression in the mind that you are taking such initiatives out of your profit for the benefit of their coming generation right so people will support more in terms of the business that you are doing into this particular market and last one is problem solving capacity right most important whenever you are doing business it is not like that your business will run smoothly there are so many hurdles as and when you are doing a business that will come out in your ways and you need to handle those hurdles with care right so you should have the problem solving capacity in yourself right you need to problem you need to solve the problems as and when it is going to arise and again this problem is with the internal stakeholders and external stakeholders so you need to handle with care again and for that you need to be creative you need to come out with creative solution so that win win situation for both the parties will arise so that it will solve immediately and your operations of the organization should not get hampered right otherwise it has a negative impact on your organization by having the wastage of resources for the time period where the problem has arisen in the organization right so you have to be creative innovative imaginative and learn from the failure right you should have the capability to learn from your past experience and provide the proper solution for uh, you know the things which is going to arise in your organization okay so essential characteristics of entrepreneurs in india as we have discussed uh, in the previous slides so now if you want to summarize uh, in the most important characteristics for uh, the entrepreneurs uh, to run their business into uh, india so first characteristics is to ability to plan right uh, ability to plan if i am speaking so entrepreneurs needs to plan every activity of their organization in terms of uh, all the parameters that we need to touch upon that is marketing finance hr even uh, they need to go for uh, research and development if their uh, business or uh, you can say their if the sectors are demanding so they need to give the respect to each of the activities and they need to develop all the activities of their organization in a very planned and a very systematic manner right so this is what uh the ability to plan is required as far as entrepreneur characteristics are concerned uh then second is marketing right marketing is uh, you know very essential parameters uh to sustain in the market because how people will come to know about your business and uh, activities so that is through the marketing uh, that people will come to know about your business so marketing is one of the essential parameter of your business so as uh, we had taken the examples of indoor right how people will come to know that sharafa bazar have this much amount of uh, varieties of foods right so you need to market market your products through various platforms either through the social media or even you can go for the paid promotions as well so this is what it's called marketing then another skills uh, that entrepreneur should possess is interpersonal skill right interpersonal skill means uh, you should have the ability to work with each other right so that is called interpersonal skill then fourth one is personal effectiveness how effective you are how people will trust on you how people will follow to you right so this is called personal effectiveness that you need to build up as a part of uh, your role that is an entrepreneur in your organization right how effective you are how uh, convincing you are into your organization that is personal effectiveness then you have a team building skill as we had discussed just uh, last previous slide team that is together everyone achieve more so you should have a team building skill and this skills will have uh, many benefit in terms of creating synergy successful entrepreneurs business team and work with teammates right so uh, this ability of entrepreneurs push the people of the organization to work together in a team to achieve a common goal of the organization that is maximization of profit and building the wealth of the shareholders that is the ultimate goal of each and every organization those who are doing business in the market right and <clears throat> through which they can have uh, various skills like uh, pervasiveness and foresights right foresights means uh, as i told you 
so being a team leader and being a team building skill you should have the four sided vision right you should have a long term vision as we have discussed about nara and murthy so yes that is what you need and team building right so team building is very essential even if you are getting failed or if your people or employees are getting failed into their efforts so you being a leader of the organization you have to motivate them to come up again with some more fruitful ideas and have some more innovations and some corrections in the previous ideas to beat the market for the future right that is what the motivation that you need to provide as a part of a leader of your organization that is you being an entrepreneur so you being an entrepreneur is playing a major role for all these activities that is going to be a part of your organization so you have to have the leadership skills in you then communication skills yes how you are communicating with your people with your employee with your customer right to the uh, you know to the people of the nation right how convincing you are how you are talking the way of talking will matters a lot right so that have a significant impact on the mind of the people right so you being an entrepreneur should have a good communication skill communication skill doesn't mean that you should good in english speaking right if i talk uh, if i will take the examples of people of china so people of china are not more entertaining the english language but yes you being an entrepreneur planning to do the business in china so you should know the local language of china because the people of china are understanding their own local language so until and unless if you are not efficient enough to communicate well with them so they will not understand your idea right they will not understand your ideas and you are failed to communicate what you actually wants to do here and people will not connect with you right so communication skill basically works to connect with you uh, with your customer with your stakeholders and the people of the nation where you are uh, doing your work or where you are planning to work so uh, wherever you will go you should have the proper communication power proper communication skills with you and communication skills build the convincing power in you and if you are ability to have the convincing people you will start developing the self confidence in you right so the last characteristics of uh, the successful entrepreneur is to have the self confidence that we had discussed in the previous one right so we'll not waste time on this so yes the skills the skills that we had gone through right the skills that we had gone through based on that uh, the contribution of each of the skills in our organization is mentioned over here right so if i talk about Uh, the successful ratio of any entrepreneur based on the common study that has been derived by the global entrepreneurship development team so this is the figure that they have provided right so if you have a creativity so it has 6.2 percentage of the contribution to become a successful in india your personality matters 10.4 percent right this is roughly parameter because this is a qualitative things you cannot measure in exact numeric things but yes this is approximate figure so if you want to you know uh, analyze the uh, parameters to become a successful entrepreneur in india so this will somehow help you to understand to build up those parameters in you right and you can also evaluate yourself also to become do being an entrepreneur how how these characteristics that you are possessing in your inner way right so this is personality 10.4% need for achievements 10.4% leadership quality 12.5 risk taking ability 16.7 and most importantly uh, almost uh, half of the parameters to become a successful entrepreneur will be covered by your energy right whatever or what may not that you have that we have mentioned uh, the previous characteristics but yes if you have energy if you have a willingness to work and you are ready to do the work even if you getting failed but your energy should be very high at all the point of time till the time you are involved into the business so definitely nobody can beat you and nobody can stop you to become successful right so this is what uh, the important things as far as successful entrepreneurs are concerned in india right so i'll again repeat creativity 6.2 uh, right so yes creativity 6.2 in india means indian uh, entrepreneurs are not much focusing on research and development so again Uh, if india needs to get success for more amount of uh, small and medium scale enterprises so indian government needs to work on this parameter and this parameter is going to enhance or uplift 
by having more focus on research and development so government needs to plan something that every organization should have some amount of budget bifurcation and execution of those budgets also to become uh, creative as far as their products are concerned and as far as their industries are concerned so that more and more amount of innovation will come out and we should become technological seller rather than adopter right right now we are adopting so many technologies from the third generating third generation countries so rather than adopting those technologies we should be in a position to develop those technologies into our own nation and we can save more amount of foreign reserves to have a superpower for the future right so that we need to work on this parameter so creativity factor which i feel that we should need to improve upon and we can if we work on a proper direction and we will focus on all the parameters that we have discussed previously okay so let's go ahead further so stages of effective entrepreneurship development right so you being an entrepreneur or you being a successful entrepreneur so if you measure yourself how to become a normal people to become a successful entrepreneur or to have uh, the owner of a successful enterprise so you if you will evaluate yourself you will find yourself that you had passed on with five parameters mainly which should be more than that but basically i have covered five more main parameters to which you need to go to become a successful entrepreneur so first is uh, the empowerment right now we need to understand what is the meaning of empowerment right so empowerment basically act or action empowering someone creating power to act right means you being an entrepreneur you are the owner of the business so you are possessing all the rights and responsibility of the organization but apart from that all the people who are working for the upliftment of your organization that is the employee of your organization should also get involved in your decision making authority or decision making power so they will feel the importance of themselves to be a part of this organization and they will also perceive that organization is also understanding themselves to be an important asset for them right so it has a great impact psychologically and that is what you being an entrepreneur needs to provide to your employees right so it helps to framework an employees expectation right people are working for two things one is monetary one is psychological satisfaction so monetary that you are giving in terms of salary and uh, extra perks that you have decided to provide to your employees but yes the psychological or you can say the benefit that you are providing in terms of kind that have also the significant impact into that moral and uh, you know uh, the you know the motivations to do the work in your organization right and it helps to set the goals to accomplish the main purpose because if you can understand the entire scenario so at the ground level your employees are working so they are very much aware about the problems that people are facing while working in your organization so if you being a uh, manager or if you being an owner needs to understand the loop holes of your organization where your productivity is hampering so you need to take the feedbacks from the lower level of employees and that is why you need to provide some platform to those people to be a part of your decision making panel and that is how you can empower your people with giving some authorities and power that will boost their morale and it has a significant impact on their productivity yes okay so moving towards to the next parameter after empowerment that is experience from the direct learning right you are learning from your own experience you are learning from your past experience that you had in your business right so it is called process of acquiring knowledge by fully and directly participating in activity so until and unless if you are not participating in something or if you are not taking initiative in something you cannot do your business you cannot learn from your business so for that you need to have produces more usable and different knowledge them learning about something with indirect experience such as game video or book right in hrn there is one terminology is called on the job training and off the job training right so we all know that 
which method is which method is more useful which method is more useful on the job or off the job on the job means the people are working uh, you know directly in the organization to acquire sufficient amount of knowledge and if we talk about off the job training so off the job training means you are working with some case studies or something but off the job training is ensuring that you are not you are not working directly into the organization to have the practical exposure so that is what the basic difference between on the job training and off the job training right so under the off the job training you are actually working on this job so you should have uh, some ifs and buts you should have the practical exposure of it so you can take some own uh, uh, you know uh, positive and negative factors so definitely you will try to improve upon it and that is what it is called experience from direct learning right you will try to enhance your ability by having the practical exposure of learning by going into the actual field that is called experience from direct learning that is what the stages of entrepreneurship development because you being an entrepreneur you need to do your work by yourself only nobody else is going to do so yes you have learned from your experience by having uh, you know different different uh, areas of genre where you have tried to enhance your business then third one is formation of business planning very essential parameter right from whatever learning that you had till now now you need to frame your business in a proper direction you need to give some direction to your business right by having proper planning of your business when i'm saying about planning the planning is about everything in terms of financial resources in terms of human resources in terms of marketing resources in terms of technological resources and in terms of uh, research and development as well as and when it is required so in uh, accounting sense if you are talking about we need to manage sources of fund and at the same time we need to manage application of fund right so business planning means as i told you without finance you cannot do the business so once you have started your business so sources of funds are also already there so this sources you need to incorporate in which kind of activities at the initial level to start your business and put them into the working mode so that planning is required before starting a business so this is called formation of business planning right so uh, we need to plan it accordingly what amount or uh, what sort of resources we required by having the availability of funds in our business right so you need to plan what percentage of funds needs to allocate to which kind of activities that is most important part you being an entrepreneur into the organization that you need to maintain okay and once you will reach to the success you again open your windows for the organization and you will invite uh, to the shareholders to become an owner of the organization because you have already scaled up your business and you are planning to go ahead to have the super normal profit or to become a multinational companies from the msm right so the beginner stages msme and the last stages mnc's clear so yes this is a journey of entrepreneur uh, we have a very good examples in our indian scenario ratan tata uh, you know dhirubhai ambani and many more uh, those who have started from the very uh, scratch level and right now they are the uh, multinational companies who are earning super normal profits and they have so many sub uh, you know subsidiary companies into their uh, you know own ventures so this is what the success story is and these all people have gone through this all the parameters of empowerment from direct learning formation of planning right the next parameter would be having long term vision yes so long term vision is nothing but to have more number of companies and you know your hand should be not limited to one industry but once you are getting success you should enhance you should explore your business into different different uh, area right so you need to achieve the expansion of your organization in all the parameters right whether it is horizontal expansion or vertical expansion right you need to go into all the parameters once you have the success story of your initial business but for that you need to go ahead with the previous stages and you need to experience a few learnings out of it and for that you have many hurdles in your ways but yes one factor will play a significant role at that point of time that your inner belief self confidence 
and positive attitudes, right? That we have seen in the previous one. Okay. So next is having long-term vision that we have discussed. And the last one for acceptability and awareness, right? You should have the acceptability power and you should have the awareness also. Whatever the scenario or technological enhancement that is taking place into the market, that you are very much aware about it. And at the same time, you should have the acceptability power, right? It's not going to work if you have the tendency to think whatever I'm doing is right. So this will kill yourself, right? So if you are working into the market, you need to learn from the people and you need to identify the loopholes in your organization and you need to work on the negative aspect of your parameter by learning from the other organization who are doing business into the market and you have to come out with the solution of this negative parameter and to become more and more stronger to have a successful stories for the future. And that is what uh, the stages of effective entrepreneurs development for any nation, right? Not in India, but it is for any nation. Okay. Right. So yes, the, whatever we have discussed, this is what uh, in this slide it is, uh, you know, very deeply it has been mentioned. So empowerment starting from the so competencies acquired matches personal strength and weaknesses and his goals. Right. So might be, as I told you, you have to give the rights to your employees to become a, uh, you know, decision taker in your organization. So whatever qualities that you don't have, or might be there are some issues for which you are not aware about it. So your employees will help out to sort it out this problem in your organization, right? So this is empowerment, upgradation, right? So you need to upgrade yourself whenever the technological changes that has been taken place. If you need to change your strategy also at any point of time, so you need to have quick adoptability for this particular things into your organization for smooth functioning for the future. Business forecasting, yes, business planning that we have discussed. So you need to develop business plan in terms of uh, sources of funds and application of funds. And you need to plan your activity accordingly where you need to put your funds to run your organization as per the requirement of the industry and the nature of business in which you are. Okay, so long-term vision, yes, short-term goals is not going to work. So you should have a long-term visions and having the connectivity with the people where you are working. Yes, acceptance, so acceptance in terms of identify, recognize and accept the strength and weaknesses of, uh, you know, the people as well as yourself also, right? You need to work on your own strength and weakness and also need to learn from, uh, you know, the strength of other uh, entrepreneurs who are working or who are doing their business smartly into the market and you need to update yourself. And lastly, you need to be aware, right? So awareness in terms of your personality, your motivation level, your capability, your personal resources, right? So this, how this going to work, right? So nobody, uh, everybody wants to become a Dhirubhai Ambani or Ratan Tata, but would you be able to? No, because you need to aware about your capability. You need to aware about the resource availability that you have, right? And you need to aware about the personality and acceptance power of people for you into the market, right? If you demand funds from the market, who will give you, right? But Mukesh Ambani will do one press conference. People will have crores of rupees within fraction of seconds. So this is what the difference that we have. So you are aware about your values into the market. And accordingly, you need to steps into steps. You need to take the steps into the market. So it is a step-by-step -step process, right? Once you have your success story, people have the acceptance power increment in yourself. And if you reach at this level, so people will provide at this level, right? So you need to understand those things. Okay. Yes. So what sort of programs uh, that uh, people need to do to have the entrepreneurship development in India? So there are three things, goal setting, time management, and team building, right? So these are the three programs uh, that, uh, you know, the institute or, uh, you know, training institute, you need to provide to the students to become an entrepreneur, right? They, you need to taught them how to uh, set the goals, how to set the goals and all these things. So people will come out into the market and uh, work very efficiently for the future enhancement. Clear? Okay. So then... Time management, very essential person. 
you need to talk them how the management of time is uh, required for not only for single activity but for the multiple activities because time plays a significant role right because uh, if you don't run with the time it will not wait for you right time and time wait for run right so if you lose your good time or if you lose your opportunity this opportunity will not come again right so you need to understand the time factors right so time factor is very important part and that is why time management in terms of uh, you know all the specific activities that is prevailing into the organization you need to have the proper management of time and that is why it is called uh, you know proper chain management uh, what we can call this and especially to efficiency or productivity in a given time frame right so whatever production you need to do you need to do it in specific time frame right you should not have the excess time to develop the product because it has a negative or you can say it has an inverse effect on the total cost that organization is generating for having the efficiency into that organization okay third factor is team building yes be a leader of your own business because you are the person who needs to take all the decision into your organization so whatever decision you will take you are the whole and sole responsible whether you are succeed or not it completely depends upon your organization yes so team building efficiency that definitely should have it in your part and that will give the confidence to your employees to work positively and collaboratively right so you being a leader it is your responsibility to uh, you know bind your entire organization into one platform that is a one common goal of the organization nobody should work for their own goals but they need to work for a common goal that is the goal of the organization to attain the maximum profitability with the having minimization of the costing and minimization of the costing is possible to have the efficient utilization of the resources so that uh, you know the loss can be minimized right and for that efficient time management is required so everything is interconnected right so from goal setting to time management to team building everything is interconnected right so somehow or other effect or direct or indirect effect of all this program are having with the ultimate you know uh, the goal that we have that is skill development to become a successful entrepreneur in india right so these are the three parameters that people needs to work upon to become a successful entrepreneur in india yes developing own business in the market how you can develop your own business into the market this is nothing but if you want to start your business into the market how you can enter into the markets right so these are the three basic stages that you need to go into it to uh, you know to start your business into the market so first is setting out the critical path right so setting out the critical path what does it mean by setting out the critical paths so <clears throat> plan different types of activity required for the business right so if you are planning to enter into the particular sector which sort of activity you are planning into the business that you need to define so plan different types of activity required for your business that you need to plan right and this plan is very critical huh? uh, you have to develop your uh, production chain right so this activities you need to develop very efficiently because jumbling is not possible right everything should be in a step by step manner right and that is what it is called setting out the critical path second part is managing the process and reducing the risk right once your path has been designed the maintenance portion will come out right and this is very important and very difficult activity right so managing the process and reducing risk so you have to manage your entire process by taking precautionary measures to reduce the likelihood of a loss right you have to manage your business very efficiently right you have to reduce the likelihood of loss or you can say even if it is a possibilities are there then also you need to work upon it right you need to work upon the reducing the profitable uh, possibilities of the loss of the organization and this could be possible once your production chain is running very smoothly and the production chain smoothly can be possible to have the proper management of the organization and the management will leads to have the efficiency in the process of the organization and that will help you to reduce the risk in the organization right and the third one is business planning as we have designed 
right so business plan you need to plan your business activity very minutely by considering all the parameters with having availability of resources and where you want to invest those resources to have the maximum churning of the profit into the organization that is what you need to have to study right by considering the viabilities of the projects and future projections of uh, you know the income generation and mitigating those in, uh, mitigating the expenses over the income right so you need to de design your business plan in such a way that you should land up with more amount of revenue part and less amount of expenses so that ultimate difference of amount would be your profitability okay now <clears throat> we will discuss about marketing strategies so marketing strategy so there are three parameters for marketing strategy that is market research market segmentation and uh, four p's of marketing right now it is a seven p's also people place and promotion apart from product price uh, and place right product price place promotion right people product so yes market research yes you need to enhance and you need to you know assess the situations of the market where new products and uh, services that are going to evolve and uh, accordingly you have to take the advantage of first mover and uh, you can capture or you can tap the maximum uh, revenues from the market also yes market research is one of the essential parameters to uh, for the entrepreneurs to get the success yes then you have to segmentation of the marketing that means you need to divide uh, the market into sub categories depending upon uh, you know the types of consumer that you have in different different areas and different different zones by considering that uh, various needs and priorities for different different products so yes market segmentation and accordingly you have to target uh, those market by providing uh, the necessary services and product that has been demanded by those people into the market and that's why uh, to mitigate all this market segmentations uh, your four p should be very strong product price place and promotion right so uh, that is what it is uh, marketing strategies for the entrepreneur then next uh, if we want to go ahead with this and financing part apart after the marketing we need to focus on the financing part so yes for financing you need to assume the first parameter to start your business that is assumption to start up capital right that was i i was telling about in the previous slide that is the sources from where the entrepreneur will collect the funds to start their business or to execute their business so yes sources of funds that entrepreneur needs to uh, you know arrange or uh, assume uh, to become uh, to start their enterprise so yes this is calculator will be tabulator your business startup cost including legal fees supplies and equipments marketing cost etc so yes you need to make some estimations about uh, the initial costing that you need to do as a part of your ent entrepreneur to start up your business and accordingly basic necessity or uh, you can say that much amount you need to ensure to collect from the market so that is called assumption of startup capital then <clears throat> you need to understand the need of capital right so after starting up or after establishing your business you need to maintain the chain of the production or the chain of services into your organization right so you need to understand the costing part that has been involved in each factors of production and parameters of services that you are delivering into the market and accordingly you need to arrange the funds in terms of capital on time and time in again into your business then cash flows and profitability issues yes so if uh, any or circumstances or some problems or any downfall times that is going to arise at that point of time you should not stop your business you should not stop your production cycle but yes you should have a ready plan b uh, as and when it is required to arrange some additional fundings to run your organizational activities right so cash flow and profitability issues you need to solve it on time and time again right <clears throat> yes then e business uh that is what we need to understand that is 
key business quality assurance and it for startups right so this is called uh, quality control and technological parameters so e business in terms of uh, we need to describe the information and application support to drive the business process most often using web technologies then it for startups right so yes you need to understand the contribution or the importance of the information technology for your organization uh, it might be possible that there are certain sectors or fields which require the support of it that is just like digital marketing so if you are involved in digital marketing business so yes definitely you are completely rely on the it infrastructure so that is what you need to ensure the proper infrastructure of it as far as your business is concerned and quality assurance you need to provide quality services to your clients and that's why quality control is a process to review your quality by considering all the factors that has been involved in your production or services and you will get certified your organization just like iso 9001 2009 or 9001 14000 or something right so this is called quality assurance certificate that provides the trust of your organization in the minds of people as and when they are uh, hunt they are hunting for seeking those services from the market so you will get the first priority if you have quality or trusted services into the market as far as information technologies are concerned because the major concern for people to you know uh, divert from uh, physical mode to soft mode the security is the biggest concern so if your quality is short so people have, will have more faith and more trust on your services and they will opt for your services into the market that will help to get the business from the market being an entrepreneur and being a startup business into the uh, you know any sort of market then if you being an entrepreneur to start your business you need to fight with certain compliances uh, that is directly leading to the legislations of the constitutions right so it depends upon two parameters as far as entrepreneurs are concerned first is uh, you need to think about business structure and uh, the second portion that you need to uh, you know tackle is taxation and return filing process right so first we will talk about business structure so business structure is nothing but uh, you know the structure of an organization or enterprise under which the business is involved with goods and services or both in terms of goods and services providing to their clients right so business structure so depending upon the services that you are providing how your structure of the organization has been designed that is what you need to focus upon right so business structure is essential portion and second part is taxation and written filing process yes uh, so uh, if i talk about before 2017 there was no gst process or gst structure so even cas and it process it field, it uh, filing people were not aware about gst the moment gst has been flowed by the government on 1st july 2017 so all the CAs and IT filing process people right those who are directly or indirectly concerned with that so they have undergone through the training and uh, you know the reading process and they had to adopt uh, the changes that has taken place into the process of filing taxation and return process right so previously the return filing process was uh, allowed for six monthly or yearly as well but in gst now it is quarterly basis right so every business needs to file their return on quarterly basis and also needs to ensure the advanced tax part right so these are the technology uh, these are the changes uh, uh, due to the compliances right due to the reforms in the government policies that has been taken place in the uh, market that entrepreneur needs to adopt right and we had taken the example of india in terms of gst so yes i hope it is clear how to tackle with the business structure and taxation and return processing parts as far as the startup and entrepreneurship is concerned okay and the last portion so barriers for entrepreneurship so these are the few barriers uh, that has been taken place out of the uh, you know core analysis part uh, by looking at the uh, various case studies and the process things that we have gone through so first is poor and uh, absent of infrastructure right poor and absence of infrastructure in terms of uh, business infrastructure you can talk about or you can say it infrastructure right so there is no proper uh, planning or executions of the activity into organization due to which 
there is a stuck up in the process and at one point of time the people will feel that uh, we need to wind up the business right and we all know that everyone should not have uh, the risk taking capability so even a short amount of loss will happen people will shut down their business right so it is not a bug of cake for everyone to bear a loss for uh, two three times right so not every person will go into this process so yes to an absence of uh, infrastructure then unsupportive legal and regulatory framework as i told you after 2018 there is a drastic shortfall uh, drastic low down in the growth of msme sector so again government needs to revise the strategy to boost up the growth of the msme sector so that uh, more and more employment generation activity should take place into the nation right and lack of training facility yes uh, you know proper training for uh, each of the field or you can say uh, you know area of sector where people needs to work so proper training proper guidance are not available into the market and that's why people are taking uh, jumbling decisions and then they will fall into the loss making activity yes so this is a lack of training facility marketing constraint yes there are a uh, few marketing constraint that has been taken place into the market like uh, high cost if you want to go for legal marketing that is a high cost if you go with ambush marketing that is the legality issues are there right so with limited resources with limited fund availability how the entrepreneur reach to the uh, you know uh, best target audience or you can say maximum target audience so that is a challenge into the market so yes there is a marketing constraints are there then lack of support services and trained extension staff many organizations are focusing on the saving of cost with the cost of training this is very dangerous scenario for uh, the today's uh, generation you should not compromise the training part of the employees right so that is what we need to provide so lack of uh, proper training and extension of staff is another again social barriers acceptance from the society sometimes it is difficult to understand for the society uh, uh, for the concept that you are coming out into the market right so this is a social barriers uh, that we can understand clear okay and then lack of financial supports very very uh, crucial part even if you have everything even if you have idea but if you don't have a finance you cannot execute your idea right and at the beginning of the presentation i told you that finance is the life blood of business so without finance no business can sustain in the market and to have the proper sustainability and to have the availability of all the other uh, you know all removal of all the other barriers that we have discussed in this slide if you have a financial resources you can fight upon it yes so financial resources is playing a significant role for the successful uh, development of entrepreneurship and uh, you know fruitful growth of the organization for the present as well as for the future so these are the few references that i have taken uh, taken during this entire presentation so you can go upon it and so thank you so much for giving me your precious time and listening patient patiently i hope this will help you uh, for your uh, career build up and thank you so much ugc hrdc and dr jagdish joshi sir for providing me this opportunity to share my thoughts on this essential skills for entrepreneurship at ugc hrdc gujarat university thank you so much signing off